It takes all of us to be at the table with our resources, with our collective list, and to be able to sit back and listen and learn and engage and come put the resources on the table for all of Minneapolis residents. We can accomplish all those things, but again, it's gonna take all of us to do it. How are we reimagining public safety? After the murder of George Floyd, we knew that the entire world was looking at our city to figure out if we were gonna become an example of developing public safety solutions. City staff have been listening to the people's demands, and today we're launching the Reimagining Public Safety Campaign. There's this hunger for change, so we saw it physically during the protest. And so, Paul, I was just wondering if you could just share a little bit of like, what does that mean? What does hungry for change look like for you? More people are seeing that the system doesn't work for everybody. So I think we're moving in a good direction. And again, like Trey said, it's gonna take all of us. And I was hoping if Paula, you could tell a bit about this change that we've made around establishing an overnight shift for parking. Previously, when your shift ended, police had that responsibility overnight to respond to Correct. someone's calls, right? Correct. Why did we do that? What impact is it having? It is an arduous shift, it's hard. Um, but we have um, three staff that go out and respond to 311 complaints and 911 complaints. It was very clear from our research that they said we want unarmed responses because when we call police overnight, things escalate, they get out of hand, it turns into something bigger than just a parking issue. And so knowing that your team is one of the most diverse, uses a racial equity lens, how are you seeing your work out in the community? We're not out there like just searching the neighborhood for parking violations. We're responding to people who need our services. We can respond very quickly and give the, the community better service. When you look like the community and you people see that they're represented in your department, you know, they're more welcoming you in. I want to focus on an idea that you talked about, Atrophic, that city services must work collectively to enhance safety for all of us. How are we doing that and how can we continue to work together? Well, I think about the different programs that the city already has in place that we can utilize, such as the cleanup program that they have in Public Works. We know that areas in our community that have high trash can sometimes um, be areas for crime and violence. Um, we also know that better lighting and more lighting in neighborhoods off the corridor can also prevent um, violence. Tell me about the shift that happened after the murder of George Floyd. What was happening? What was the community responding? What were they demanding? We've been complaining about police brutality for centuries. This is nothing new. This is a time and a place and a moment where we can actually unite. Mm -hmm. So the interrupters is that group of men and women that's in those trenches where all the gunshots are and all the dope selling and whatever else you want to call it, we there. So when we out there, we not telling them what they can and can't do. What we trying to do is offer them a different platform. Ultimately, they have to be the ones to do the work, but they can't say nobody is there that don't care. So let's be clear, public safety, when you reimagining this, listen, you can ask a thousand people a question, but if your actions don't reciprocate what's coming out of your mouth, then guess what? You spinning your wheel. So when we out there, we trying to empower these neighborhoods to become communities again. You know, tell me a bit about this new program that we've created, the Behavioral Crisis Response Team, the city's first unarmed uh, response team for mental health crises. So the BCR, we started in December of 2021. We're dispatched by 911, the response to mental health crisis. And usually we just try to get people resources. So John will like set them up with resources that's gonna help them like four or five months down the road. So they can like, you know, keep going back like to therapy, like they have a psychiatrist they can go to. So resources that they can use long term that will help them uh, prevent like the circle they've been going through over and over. And a lot of people appreciate that. Um, and we've been getting a lot of positive response from community members. I actually want to throw it over to Trey. If you can talk about why relationships are so important to the interrupters team. It's important because we the same guys that was born and raised in them same communities. Half of these young men and women that we see is our buddies, nieces and nephews, and they, so guess what? From a lived experience, it gives you an opportunity to hire young men. Mm -hmm. If you can give somebody livable, sustainable wages, 
you better believe that they all in. That's a part of the partnership. And again, it allows us to be present. We all have our professional roles of what we're doing to serve the community, perhaps even a calling to serve the community, uh, but we're also neighbors. We all live in this community. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask each of you, when you think of a better future, what do you imagine for Minneapolis? I imagine Minneapolis to be a thriving city for all individuals. I imagine Minneapolis where children are not afraid to ride their bikes, that they can be children. I grew up on like Lindale, Penn Avenue. We still go through the park, play basketball, play football. Now that you can do that, <laughs> it is very uh, dangerous to go out there and try to do that. Uh, for me, I would like for Minneapolis to be like that again, where kids can go out. I imagine that resources are shared with the least, the last, the lost, and the left out. I imagine a vibrant city. In North Minneapolis, we'll have sidewalk cafes and streetscapes and just, you know, it, it would look like any other community. I imagine Minneapolis having a dose of reality from an accountability standpoint. A lot of the resources that the city provides um, have been around for a long time. They're just not being utilized. As we wrap up, I just want to thank each of you for being here, for the service that you're doing for this community, the calling that you're receiving. You are continuing to make this a safer and more thriving community for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. I am, I am Minneapolis. Minneapolis.